So we can also look at a way to describe texture using co-occurrence matrices. Um, these, this uh, technique considers not just the distribution of intensities, but also their relative positions. And the idea is that we want to construct a uh, histogram of pixel pairs, namely, uh, given a intensity value A, let's call it, at this position, we look at a fixed offset relative to that, let's say direction theta, distance r, and see um, if we have an intensity B at that location. So we count the number of times that intensity A is in this relative to position to intensity B, and that's going to be a histogram matrix H of A comma B. So in general, this will be dependent, of course, on what relative position we choose. So here's a simple example. Here's a, a simple small image containing eight possible intensities. And I'm going to look at this relationship where I have uh, just one pixel to the right of the other. So intensity i and j is to the right of i. So the co-occurrence matrix lists the possible intensities uh, across the top and down. I'm going to list i down this way and j across this way. So here, for example, we recorded 3, meaning that uh, i6, six, i was 6, intensity 6 was to the right of intensity 2 three times. And looking at the image, these are the three places where, um, where that was resulted from. Uh, similarly, for a 1 being a right to the, to the right of a 1 occurred one time in this image, namely right here. Let's do an example of another image. Uh, this is a simpler one where we have only three intensities, 0, 1, and 2. And let's say we have, we consider the relationship i and j, where j is uh, to the right and one pixel down from i. So we're going to look at uh, a co-occurrence matrix. j is going to go across the top here and i down the side. And we'll identify. Um, these properties. So first one we'll look at is where a 0 is next to a 0. I'm, I'm sorry, to the right and down from a 0. So that occurs here, 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 and let's see, one more place here. So I have four occurrences of that. Um, let's take a um, 0 next to a 1. So that occurs here and uh, here. So that occurs two times. Um, we have no occurrences of a 0 um, next to a 2. And let's do one more. How about a 1 next to a 0. So i equals 1, j equals 0. Um, let's see, we have 1 here and 1 here. So that occurred twice. So anyway, you can, you can get the idea there how you would fill those in. So here's what it looks like for a, a full-sized image. Um, Basically, if we have a random noise image, then each intensity value is equally likely to be next to any other intensity value. So our co-occurrence matrix looks very uniform. Um, however, if we have a highly correlated image like this, then a pixel intensity, here we're, we're considering one pixel to the right, is very similar to, the, to its neighbor. So we should expect values along the diagonal. In this case, we have kind of a sinusoidal type variation. So they're actually displaced from the diagonal a little bit, as you can see here. In a real image, um, 
a lot of places are highly correlated or uniform as you can see so those again tend to yield a lot of values along the diagonal let's look at uh, I just wanted to show some interesting results from human vision so psychologists looked at what kinds of textures humans could discriminate pre-attentively meaning quickly without cognitive processes without thinking or studying the images and um, what they came up with was that textures that have the first the same first and second order statistics are indistinguishable so first order statistics we've seen are measures of single points such as the mean or variance uh, the density of points uh, second order statistics are measures of pairs of points such as the co-occurrence matrix um, one way to useful way to think about this is first order statistics would be the statistics you would get by throwing a dart at an image at random locations so you'd hit an image at these points and you would record the intensities that you you struck there and you would compute statistics of that uh, a second order measure throws pairs of points at the image so pairs of darts so to speak at random locations like this so um, you would record statistics of the pairs and you can go higher than that you could go say third order in which case you would throw three and so forth so here's an example of a um, uh, simple texture um, this one has uh, a region here that is different in size okay so size is a um, basically first order statistic right because if we were to throw darts at points within this part of the image we would be more likely to hit a, a dark spot than we would out here so this is easy to distinguish because it has different first order statistics uh, similarly this one um, has a different orientation of the central region which means that the second order statistics are different so if I were to throw a dart sort of at this orientation um, I would get more likely to hit a pair of black points than I would if I threw it in this part of the image here's an image that um, has the same first and second order statistics but different third order statistics um, so if you study now this one you have to really study to see the difference in those two regions uh, namely one is um, and, and the letter R that's reflected and the other is the letter R that's not reflected so to to capture that uh, property you would need um, basically three points um, similarly for for this uh, shape over here so this kind of uh, is a uh, very easy way to understand the way humans can uh, distinguish textures unfortunately there is a counterexample here's a counterexample of a texture that is easy to recognize but has the same identical first and second order statistics and what we're actually doing here our eye is picking out these uh, connected regions um, in the central part here so the uh, the revised theory is that we can um, actually pick out uh, these local features called textons because the human visual system is very good at grouping and so we are grouping these features into textons so this is an example of a structural texture representation and here are some other examples of textons um, that are based on oh, connectivity termination you can also have uh, textons that would be based on color finally I'll look at uh, spectral approaches to texture recognition um, the idea here is that we take the Fourier transform of the image and then we um, look at 
the intensities of the spectrum in different bins. So one way is, say if this is the Fourier transform f of uv, um, we could look at a, and that's the zero point right there, we could look at the uh, energy in a ring spaced at a distance r from that origin. Um, so the other way, the other choice we could have is to look at um, directions. So if this is the center point, we would look at all the intensity within, let's say, this, uh, this band uh, at angle theta like that. So again, construct a feature vector using those two things. Uh, so here's an example of a uh, two images, um, kind of a random orientation of these matchsticks, and then a very regular arrangement, uh, yielding quite different um, Fourier transform spectra. And this is the um, plot of the uh, spectra as a function of radius for those two images. So as you can see, very different between the two. And here is a plot of the spectra as a function of angle, also very different. And one more example, an image here, it's Fourier spectra shown here. This is the spectrum as a function of the radius and the spectrum as a function of the angle theta. Well, one more uh, image with its texture and its spectrum as a function of theta.